I think it's always uh, good. We took home a number of accolades last year, uh, including the latest, the early or early January. Um, we had the Investor of the Year um, by the Rwanda Development Board, and then lastly was the um, uh, Bank of the Year. So we puts us in a in a nice position. Um, testament to the good work that's been done by the bank, but more importantly, gives uh, gives our, our staff who are rated in our last rating as at December last year, right. the top decile of the, the measurement company that, uh, that measures our performance in terms of staff engagement. So it gives something, our staff something to feel uh, really proud of when they, when they come to the office. And I think that sets us up for uh, making the changes that, we, that we've done because a lot of the changes in co in include right. um, change management right. and management, and it's a lot easier to do things when you have engaged staff that are willing to follow you into the into the future. Speak to me more on our best bank uh, or in Rwanda 2019 there, of course, with the Global Finance Review. Why exactly i and &M? There is a couple of banks in Rwanda, but specifically on your end, how did this happen? I think a lot of it has to do with uh, consistency, mm. um, delivering consistently. Uh, they look at our customer service levels. They look obviously first first point of port of call is performance. Right. Um, second one is customer service levels, growth of the bank. Uh, they look at our, 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 uh, our impairments, uh, how we f how we feature to with uh, within the industry. And I think we're in a in a good position to tick on a on a number of key areas, including um, ATM uptime, card acceptability. Um, the fact that our, our uh, visa cards are, uh, have the highest uh, acceptance rates within the in the market. Those are some of the some of the key areas, right. and then a lot of it, the the base or the foundation of it, is on people and the way we, we treat our customers and uh, customer service. Speak to me more on our product development. Of course, there we saw last year you signed a partnership with uh, Spen, and of course, uh, more on the blockchain uh, uh, banking. What's the update currently, and how has this been of impact to the banking industry? So let's talk about access to finance. Right. Firstly, um, I think it's been a, a phenomenal success from an access to finance. It's in early days yet. We nine months into the we're nine months into the the, the launch of the product. Uh, the, we're now at uh, roughly 190,000 customers. How many of those but, are active? Uh, I would say about 60% right. of the total base are active, um, and we're seeing signups of uh, roughly a thousand a day now. And this is highly dependent on the number of vendors that have been signed up. And I think that's the the, the key to the success. We have 5,000 vendors. Uh, signed up across the, the country. So instead of having to cash your money out, you can actually go and use a, a QR code within one of the vendors, and that's from um, eating establishments to uh, fashion outlets uh, to salons. So next time you have your haircut, use your spend to make your, <laughs> make your payment. But, but are uh, they really available everywhere? Let's they are available because we have now... What we did was we took feedback from the, from the customers in the beginning, right. and they were struggling because... Uh, the owners might not be around or the entrepreneur is not around and that's when we came up with the idea of using the QR code. Um, we're using for signups. Right. The reason why we're able to hit the thousand a day mark on the signups is because we're connecting directly into the, the national database. Then we're using uh, facial recognition uh, for um, uh, KYC purposes. So you use your, your ID card, take a photo of your ID card, take a selfie, and uh, it uses facial recognition to do the, the KYC process. So on the absolute end edge of cutting edge when right. it comes to technology. Robin, speak to me about, of course, uh, your loan book. What does it look like currently, more on the performance and uh, perhaps your current asset base? Okay, if you look at our... Loan book as, uh, as part of our total assets, we're looking at roughly 60%. Obviously, we have, we have some strategic investments. We have placements with, uh, with financial institutions, which we, uh, which we do on an ongoing basis. And that's to get, generate more, um, more revenue for our deposit base. Um, but the loan book, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, we're in a healthy position. Um, we ended the, the year at, at, at roughly 100 and 170 billion uh, Rwanda francs. Uh, in terms of overall assets, uh, some of the other banks are, are yet to publish their results, but we, I think we're firmly in second place. Maybe one other might, uh, 
we, we're neck and neck for, for tied second. Um, right. But uh, from an impairment point of view, very comfortable with the position that we're in at the moment. We ended the year 2.5, uh, no change since, since last year. So we've so grown we're in a solid seeing, race. We're not seeing a growth on the, uh, on the non-performing loans. No. Is it just stable no, in the same range? We've seen it stable at the, at the same range. Uh, as a percentage of the overall book, it's, uh, two point, it's roughly 2.5%. Right. Um, and that's on the back of really good loans growth as well. So we're growing the book at a, at a, at a, in a disciplined manner. Um, and I think if you, if you look at us at loss, uh, over the last uh, rep reporting periods, you'll see that we've been a ahead of the market right. in terms of that growth as well. So once again, uh, w uh, good disciplined growth. Uh, within the bank. 7.5 billion rand and francs registered as, of course, a net income, profit, uh, pre-tax profit in our 2018 full year report. Break down the, uh, the drivers to this. How, okay. What happened? What, what, what is uh, driving these numbers? So the main thing is a headline income going up by 26%. I think that's, uh, that's really important. Um, uh, sorry, not headline, in uh, interest income increasing 26%. Uh, we've seen a really good uh, compounded growth rate, growth rate over the last five years uh, at uh, just over, just on 20% uh, for the bank. So good growth, uh, uh, sustainable right. and, uh, uh, um, and, and continuing. Um, we've managed to keep our costs, uh, costs under control um, at 8% uh, CAGR on costs. And that's on the back of investments, especially in, in our core banking system. We've seen a, a, a lot of focus was on the on the new core banking system last year, which sets us up from uh, the platform from which to grow. To grow, um, we're looking now at uh, our fee income, uh, quite an important area. Uh, we saw a, a seventy percent uplift last year in uh, in fee income on accounts, so right. good growth in in that area. So those are the main areas of growth. We still are looking for more in terms of although we saw good growth on the, on the, the, the um, customer fee income, uh, and that was on the back of accounts, account number growth. Right. We've seen a, a solid performance, uh, especially from uh, up, uh, up country branches uh, coming in, uh, opening new accounts. Robin, uh, we've run out of time, but I want to ask you one last question. Of course, uh, what are we looking at in terms of uh, dividend payout, and what has the AGM agreed? What are we seeing? You mentioned something about growth in the price per share earning. Yeah. What are we looking at? As, Dividend payout. Okay. And when? So, so AGM is scheduled for twentieth of May. Um, dividend uh, dividend that's been recommended by the board board is uh, five point nine one um, uh, francs per share, um, and we will have probably uh, most likely have that ratified at our AGM on the twentieth of May. 